Hey there, everybody. John here with our Sunday school lesson for Sunday, December the 12th, and it's the third Sunday of Advent. And this Sunday, we're looking at Mary's uh, trip to go visit her cousin Elizabeth. And our main point for the lesson today is that God works through people to encourage all of us in the faith. That sometimes a life of following God and believing in God can be hard. And so God will use other people to encourage us. And we're going to look at how maybe we can encourage other people in our lives to remain faithful in their walk with God. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our story from the Bible. And really, it connects so much with our story from last week that we're going to quickly go through our story from last week, too. So last time on Sunday School, we looked at Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus. And what happens to Mary, she's going about her daily life, and all of a sudden, an angel of the Lord appears before her. So that picture is a picture of an angel. Um, who knows if that's what angel really looks like, but there you go. Uh, so it's an angel, and the angel comes to see Mary, and he's like, hey, Mary. He says, Mary, you have found favor with God. Hello. And Mary, it says in the Bible, she is disturbed. She's like, ah, I'm not ready to see an angel. What is going on? And all of us would probably be a little freaked out if we saw an angel. And then the angel tells her, Mary, it's going to be okay. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. You're going to give birth to a baby boy who's going to be the savior of the world. Okay. And Mary is still unsure. She's saying, how can this be? How can I give birth to savior of the world? I'm not married yet. I'm just a regular girl. Um, how am I going to give birth to the savior? And so then the angel tells her, it's all going to happen by the power of God. You don't need to worry about this, Mary. It's not about you being amazing. It's about how amazing God is and what he can do through you. Through you, Mary, he's going to send the savior of the world. Nothing is impossible with God. And so Mary's like, okay, then let it be done as you have said. I, I will obey and serve God in all of this. So then where we pick up for our story today is that Mary goes to visit her cousin, Elizabeth. Now, what's interesting is at the end of our reading for last week, the angel actually talks about her cousin, Elizabeth. He says, and behold, your relative, your cousin, Elizabeth, in her old age has conceived a son, which means that she is pregnant too. So Elizabeth is Mary's cousin, and she's very old, and she's never had a baby. But now by a miracle of God, even though she's very old, she's pregnant with a precious baby. And the angel says, and this is the sixth month with her. So she's been pregnant for six months. Um, and her and she who was called barren for nothing will be impossible with God's so angel saying this is a miracle of God. Okay, and so Mary is actually going to go on a trip and she's going to visit her cousin Elizabeth and that's where we pick up our story for today. So today it says in verse 39 in those days Mary rose and went with haste to the hill country. So she quickly went to the hill country to a town in Judah and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. So what we see in our story is that Mary gets up and she travels down the road to go visit her cousin, Elizabeth. So this is the best picture I could find of another girl uh, for today. So this is her cousin, Elizabeth, right there. We're gonna pretend that that's, who knows what Elizabeth looked like. We're gonna pretend for today that that's what Elizabeth looked like, okay? And so she goes to visit her cousin, Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, so Mary shows up, um, the baby leapt in her womb. So Elizabeth has a baby in her womb and the baby leaps. The baby is actually John the Baptist who would go and tell the whole world that the Savior had arrived. And so the baby senses the Savior is near. So even the baby is excited and leaps in Elizabeth's uh, tummy. And then also Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and she exclaimed with a loud cry, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. So Elizabeth, that's, that's an amazed face right there, right? Not a sad face, but an amazed face. So Mary arrives. And the baby in, in Elizabeth's womb, by a miracle of God, senses that Jesus, the Savior of the world, is nearby. Even the baby in her tummy leaps for joy. The Holy Spirit, which is what the dove is a picture of, that 
It's a picture of a dove, which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit fills Elizabeth and she knows right away, whoa, Mary, you are pregnant with the Savior of the world. This is amazing. What a precious privilege it is to have you in my home. And then Mary responds by praising God. It's called the Magnificat. It's Mary praising God because it had been confirmed to her that she was going to give birth to the Savior of the world. You can imagine, I mean, Mary believed the angel, but you can imagine as she's walking along the road to visit her cousin, her going, did that really happen? Like, did I really talk to an angel? Am I really going to give birth to the Savior of the world? I mean, I, I don't think I'm crazy, but but am I crazy? I mean, all I would be thinking that if I was in Mary's situation. And so Mary arrives and visits Elizabeth, and God works through Elizabeth, through the Holy Spirit, and shows Elizabeth, yes, this is uh, your cousin Mary who's going to give birth to the Savior of the world. And this is such a relief for Mary. She's so overjoyed because she's not alone in this anymore. Someone else knows and has confirmed to her that she's not crazy. And she is going to give birth to the Savior of the world. And so then Mary bursts out in a song of praise. She's just so happy. Have you ever been so happy that you couldn't hold it in? And you're just like, yes, right? That's what Mary does, except she doesn't just say yes. She says, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation, and he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts and brought down the mighty from their thrones and humbled those of hum and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers to Abraham and his offspring forever. So you might've been saying that sounds nice, but I have no idea what, what was just said. <laughs> There's a lot of big words in there and a lot of uh, talking about different parts of the Bible. What Mary is doing is she's just saying, yes, praise God. He has worked through me, this normal, ordinary girl to give birth to the savior of the whole world. That's what she's saying. And she's just so overjoyed. So encouraged by what God did through Elizabeth to confirm that she wasn't crazy. She's encouraged and overjoyed. So remember, our lesson for the day is that God works through people to encourage other people in their walk of faith, because sometimes following God is hard. You know, we don't see God right in front of us. We don't talk to God like we would talk to a person sitting across from us. But nonetheless, we believe that God is real. And he certainly, we can communicate with him through prayer and we can feel his presence. Um, but God works through other people to encourage us in the faith, because like I just said, sometimes believing in faith can be hard and difficult, especially on hard days. You can be thinking, now, where is God? I wonder, is all of this really, is all this Jesus stuff true? But God can work through even people like you and me to encourage our friends and family that, yes, God is real. And yes, God loves them, too. And so what I want us to think about for this week is how can God use you and I to encourage our friends and family in their walk of faith? Well, I have three little ideas for us of things you could practice. The first one is that you could just pray for your family. Pray that God will work through his Holy Spirit to reveal to them that he is real and that he loves them. The second is you could say a blessing at, your, at a mealtime with your family. You could say grace. I know my kids do this, and it is a real blessing to me to hear them pray in faith. It encourages my heart and my walk in faith as their parent. Third, you could just remind them that God loves them. It's such a sweet thing if, if your kids come up to you and say, hey, mommy and daddy, God loves you, and I love you too. That's a huge encouragement in the faith. And so you can do that for your parents, your, your brothers and sisters, those three things. They are things you could, simple things you could do. Pray for your family say a blessing at a meal, and remind them that God loves them. So there's our lesson for this week. I hope you're encouraged in your faith and that God will work through you this week to encourage others as well. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.